So I have something pretty amazing that I want to give you today. It's exactly what you need to hear. It is not just a pep talk. It is the kind of message that a really dear friend who's fed up with you delivers straight between the eyes. What am I talking about? I'm talking about your dreams. You're the kind of person just like me that every single year you write down the things that you want in your life. And I would imagine that as each year rolls on and the new list gets written, you move the thing that you didn't work on this year to the list that you do for the next year and on and on and on. I mean, how many years have you been thinking about writing a book or changing your job or changing where you live? or healing some aspect of your past, or finding love, or learning how to love yourself, or starting that business. These things that you hold in your heart, they are meant to be out in the world. And today, I'm on a mission to get you to stop waiting. Stop waiting for the perfect time. Stop waiting to feel ready. Stop waiting for the money. Stop waiting for permission. Stop waiting to feel like somebody's going to care about this. The only person that needs to care enough is you. Because today is the day that you're going to pick up the pen, you're going to start the research, you're going to commit to taking action. Why? Because that's what you're meant to do with your life. You're meant to create a bigger vision for yourself. And the reason why I wanted to talk to you about this today is because I know you need to hear it. See, a couple weeks ago, we did a episode on imposter syndrome. And imposter syndrome is just self-doubt. It's just when you intellectualize your self-doubt and you talk yourself out of doing what you want to do. You tell yourself, oh my God, I want to be a singer. I want to be a writer. I want to, I want to travel more. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do the other thing. And then you tell yourself that you're not ready, that you're not worthy, that it's not going to happen to you. That episode was called The Four Words That Silence Self-Doubt. So the day we released that episode, two really interesting things happened. And it made me realize, I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you about how you're holding yourself back from pursuing the goals that you want to pursue in your life. And so here's what made me realize we got to talk about this. First of all, on the morning that the episode aired, number one, I woke up and there was already a voice memo from a friend of mine. She was only halfway through the episode. She was already starting to tear up because the episode made her think about this dream of writing a book, publishing a book, and how she's been putting it off because her self-doubt and feeling like an imposter, it has kept her from picking up the pen. Here's that memo. Hi, Mel. Oh, I'm partially through Kendall's imposter commentary, and I had to stop it right in my misty moment to tell her and you, as a woman who's soon going to be 60, I feel the imposter, imposter syndrome too. Why, well, I've had have a book deal sitting on my desk since 2006, too self-doubting to take the risk of judgment. Oh, I'm not a respected writer. Oh, it isn't that interesting to actually pin it. It's been on the top of my annual goal list for almost 20 years now, yet remains just a dream due to every imposter, imposter excuse to not follow through. I teared up when I got to that part of your message, which is actually the most powerful awareness. Talk about a double barrel of self-doubt that I too share. I just want to thank you, Kendall, for being raw and real. And I want you to go for it. You got this. Imagine how far you will be in 20 years. And thank you, Mel. You just don't know who you might be touching. And I appreciate all your kindness and love to the universe. You know what strikes me about that? This is what hit me time 20 years time that for 20 years she would put on her annual list of goals write a book 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 I bet you make a list of dreams and goals don't you I do every single year I write them all down and when the next year rolls around there's usually one or two that I move from one page to the other page. For me, it was always start a podcast, start a podcast, start a podcast. And so much fucking time went by where I carried this dream from one page to the next. Why did you waste so many years 
thinking about this podcast and doing nothing about it? Well, I'm sure for the same reasons that you're wasting time. To begin with, I didn't know how to do it. Plus, I had so much going on from the little things like, I got to get dinner on the table. Somebody else has already done it. I got college tours this weekend. What if I do it? And it's a disaster. Like, it's embarrassing how bad it does. By the way, who am I to compete with the people that are already doing it, that have already said everything, like Joe Rogan and Alex Cooper and NPR and everybody else? And by the way, all the good ideas, they're already out there. I, and there's no room for me. And I don't even know how to get started in this. I mean, the excuses are endless. But time isn't. Just think about that. Your excuses are endless, but time isn't. Think about all the time that passed. Not only was this something that my friend had written on her annual goal list, she actually wrote a book proposal and she got an offer and it was sitting on her desk since 2006. That's 18 years. What a shame. You know, when you hear somebody's got a goal and they've just kind of like been pushing it off for a week or two or a month, you're like, oh, come on, get over yourself. Come on, get it, get your ass working on it. Let's go. But when you think about how much time you've wasted, that's a lot. And look, I don't want to scare you, but I kind of want to take my hands right now and put them on your cheeks or your shoulders and shake you because I want to wake you up and I need you to realize that your life, it's a melting ice cube. And I think we all believe that we have time, that at some point it'll be the right time, that someday you'll feel ready, that someday it'll be perfect, that someday you'll be a legitimate writer, that someday you'll have something to say. And I'm here to tell you right now that today is that someday. You will waste your whole life and you will watch that ice cube melt you will watch time tick by waiting for some day to come. And you are listening to this right now because you needed to hear this. You have on that secret list that you either have on a piece of paper or you have tucked into your heart, a dream, a goal, something that you want to change that you are too fucking scared to get started on. And today that ends. Today you're gonna stop waiting you're going to stop wishing. You're going to stop waiting for the right time, waiting for this to happen, waiting for the other thing to happen, waiting for you to feel ready, waiting for this, waiting for that. That ice cube is going to be a puddle that will evaporate if you keep doing that. And I am not going to let 20 years go by. No way. Not in your life, not in my life, not in my friend's life. Today, we make a commitment to ourselves that we are going to get started. And I know you need to hear this from me today because the second thing that happened after we released that episode is that within 24 hours of it going live, Kathy was only the first person to reach out to me. But within hours, there were over 700 messages from listeners of this podcast from around the world talking about their dreams and how imposter syndrome had taken them down to, how they felt paralyzed and awkward. How many times have you looked back on your life and thought, I wish I had started something sooner. I wish I had done this thing. I wish I had done that thing. And I'm going to tell you something. The biggest regret that you will ever have in your entire life is that you didn't push through the fear. You didn't push through the bullshit imposter syndrome. You didn't push through the self-doubt and get started on the dreams that you have, on the life you want to create. And so today, this conversation is dedicated to your dreams. It's dedicated to the courage and the fire inside you and your capability of moving from thinking and wishing and wanting things in your life to finding the courage to take action and make them happen. And is it going to be easy? No. Nope. Is it worth it? Always. I think it's important that everybody just be on the same page about how scary it is to want something and how frustrating it is when you want something, but you're too scared to get started and work for it. And my mission today is to kick you 
in the ass so that you push through the fear and the insecurity and the imposter syndrome and the sadness and the regret or whatever it is that's holding you back from taking the actions that you're capable of taking over time to chip away at this dream and this vision of a bigger life. I want you to start to see something bigger for yourself. And more importantly, I want you to start working on it. And what does that look like? What does it look like? Well, I'm going to boil it down. It's very simple. It's about time and energy. That's all that this is about. You do not have to write that book overnight. You have to pick up the fucking pen. You do not have to become a physician overnight. You have to research schools and then you have to apply. Today, we are going to begin the process of moving from the dream world and the doubt world into the real world. We are going to get physical. And I'm going to bring in a metaphor that I think is really important. And it's a metaphor that I used in a project that we did with Audible called Reinvent Your Life. I like to think about life as one long road trip. Every year of your life is a mile marker on the road of life. And the thing about this road trip is it's a solo journey. You started at mile zero and you were alone. That's how you came into this world. And wherever the road of your life leads you, when you leave this world, you're going to be alone when you leave. Yes, you'll be surrounded by family and friends, but when you actually pass over, you are on your own. And the truth is, it is a solo journey. Yes, you're going to drive parallel with some people. Yes, you're going to intersect with some people. Yep, you're going to travel in packs, but you are driving alone. And look, I'm not telling you this to make you feel isolated or unsupported. That's the last thing that I want you to feel. The reason why I'm telling you this is because I want you to understand the power that you have to make these dreams part of your day-to-day -day life as you pursue them. I mean, maybe you've been so worried about what everybody else is going to think, and that's what's kept you from starting your YouTube channel or writing that screenplay or making a career change. I'm here to tell you, no one gives a shit about what you do. You want to know why? Because everybody else is driving their own car on their own solo journey, and they're busy trying to figure out their own life. When you realize that the only person who is truly judging you right now is you. When you embrace that you're the one in your way, it can spark a fire in your gut. Yes, it sucks that my friend has been telling herself for 20 years that she's not a real writer, that she's not a respected writer, that it's not that interesting. Yeah, that sucks to wake up and realize that you're the one that's been dragging yourself down. But you want to know what sucks more? Spending another 20 years never writing it. So step one, you have to acknowledge the thing that's on your list and that's in your heart. And then step two is take responsibility for doing whatever you can, however you're capable, in whatever big or small way to move toward it. Get serious about looking ahead instead of looking back. Looking out the window in front of you at the road ahead and where you want to go. You can inch your way day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year to creating a whole new life for yourself. And that's not to say there's anything wrong with your life right now. It's to say that there are directions that you want to head in that you deserve to start paying attention to. And I'm going to come back to how you do it. It's time and it's energy. Every single day when you wake up, you can find five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes to move from thinking about what you want to taking action on what you want. Picking up the pen, writing a sentence, sending an email, doing the research, taking a class, all of these actions are how you move towards what you want while you're still in the life that you have. That's how you do it. And the other thing that you're going to have to pay attention to is energy. Because just like you are wasting precious time on shit that doesn't really matter to you, you are also wasting your precious energy spending time with people who are draining it from you, who are not giving it back to you. 
And so every single day when you wake up, I want you to pay attention to where you're putting your time and where you're putting your energy. And I want you to find five measly minutes to start working on what you want in the physical world instead of keeping it a secret in your heart and in your mind.